Are you looking for the 411 on living in the 412? Stay right here to find out what it's really like to live in the Pittsburgh area. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Mark McClinchy and I'm a Pittsburgh area real estate agent that specializes with out of state home buyers. If you are like most of my clients, you are researching your move well in advance and you have limited knowledge and experience with neighborhoods, school districts, and community amenities available in the Pittsburgh area. Then Mark Knows Pittsburgh is the channel for you. Be sure to check out my extensive library and reach out directly if you would like to prepare for your move. So let's get started with today's topic, what it is like living in Pittsburgh, which will be presented in two parts. So be sure to check out part two video as well. My goal with this series is to provide honest and accurate information that is almost impossible to find anywhere else. Sure, you could jump into online forums and find lots of gripes and trash talking about Pittsburgh Pittsburgh, but not sure if those complainers would be happy anywhere. Some of them think the weather is horrendous, the traffic is always congested, and that everyone is a jag off. It's just not true. Here is my experience and take on living in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh weather is fairly mild. As I explained in this video, yes, we have cold weather and snow during winters, but very rarely does the winter weather limit travel or lead to dangerous situations. The average high temperature in January is 37 degrees. Pittsburgh only averages two days per year where the low temperature at night dips below zero degrees. The summer months also lack extreme temperatures. The warmest month of the year in Pittsburgh is July and the average high temperature is 84 degrees. Pittsburgh averages 10 days per year where the high is above 90 degrees and temperatures in the fall and spring are very pleasant with average highs in the 60s and lows in the 40s. Okay, but besides temperatures, what about precipitation, humidity, and cloud cover? Well, Pittsburgh is pretty average. When it comes to rain, Pittsburgh averages 38 inches of rain per year, which is the same average for the entire US. And when it comes to snow, we average 28 inches per year, which is also the same as the US average. And the average humidity is 68%, also in the average range for most places in the US. Okay, but what about gray and overcast days? Maybe you have heard the comparison of Pittsburgh to Seattle or London for dreary weather. If you are looking for entire days that are sunny with no clouds, it is true. Pittsburgh averages just 60 clear days per year. But what's wrong with a few clouds? We actually have 160 days per year that are sunny or mostly sunny. Since Pittsburgh is downwind from the Great Lakes, the cold, dry air from Canada mixes with warm, moist air and produces lots of clouds and variable weather. But fortunately, most of the time, Pittsburgh is just outside of the snow belt, so the heaviest lake effect snow usually stops about an hour north of Pittsburgh. So Pittsburgh weather is definitely not as bad as some will make you believe. We do have four distinct seasons, and every single week you will experience some enjoyable weather and probably a few days with meh weather. But it does help you appreciate the great weather days when they come around. Also, Pittsburgh is in a better position than most US cities to deal with climate change. So let's talk about a subject with even more heated debates than the weather, the traffic in Pittsburgh. And before we get too deep into congestion, potholes, and which roads to avoid during rush hour, it's important to understand the general layout and landscape of the Pittsburgh region. We have three major rivers, plenty of creeks and streams, and tons of rolling hills. Most of our communities were also built well before highways and mass transit. Our main roads can be slow to navigate at times with numerous intersections and choke points. Our side and back roads can be steep, windy, and narrow. Expect to find plenty of bridges, tunnels, and getting from point A to point B is never in a flat straight line. Like most metropolitan areas, our suburban retail districts are concentrated along several key corridors with lots of traffic lights. So if it is late afternoon or early evening, or worse, during the holidays, then roads like McKnight Road in the North Hills, 228 in Cranberry, Washington Road in the South Hills, in the Miracle Mile in Monroeville, you can expect there to be delays in heavy volume. 
But this isn't sit at the same light for two to three cycles like I've experienced in many other US cities. Rather than a 10 minute trip on a five mile stretch on one of these roads, when there is light traffic, perhaps it takes 15 to 20 minutes. It could be worse. Or you can always find a way to avoid it. In the comments, I'm going to build a list of best shortcuts in time-saving roads in the Pittsburgh area. A few that come to mind, Pioneer Avenue to avoid backups on Liberty from the tunnel, or Bigelow Boulevard to do an end around the heart of Oakland. What are your favorites? Put them in the comments below. While the pandemic and work from home policies reduced traffic considerably, we are definitely seeing a return to pre-pandemic traffic volume. But as long as you're able to avoid peak rush hour traffic times at the major trouble spots, which are the Squirrel Hill, Liberty, and Fort Pitt tunnels, you won't spend much time in traffic compared to other US cities. In fact, Pittsburghers spend less time in traffic than almost every other city that is bigger or the same size. The only examples I could find with lower traffic was Columbus, St. Louis, and Kansas City. Another helpful statistic is that Pittsburghers spend an average of 23 minutes commuting, which is one of the lowest commute times in the country. So what did we learn? Everything is relative and your perspective probably depends if you're a pessimist or an optimist. For me, the weather in Pittsburgh is definitely one of the highlights. Not too hot, not too cold, not too much snow, and enough sun to enjoy the outdoors in every season. And for someone that spends most of my day driving all over Pittsburgh, the traffic is fairly light and getting from one side of town to the other is very manageable. I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to check out part two of what it's really like living in Pittsburgh to learn more about the people and the overall size of the city.